Tonight with Richard Dean and Tim Elliott in association with Eros Group, partners to the world's best brands, voted Superbrand 2011. This is Dubai Eye 103.8. Insight, an in-depth look at the issues shaping our world. And tonight we're looking at the sensitive issue of food security. We've got a great panel of guests here this evening. First of all, as ever on a Wednesday, Sean Evers, managing partner of thegulfintelligence.com. Sean, good to see you. Good evening, Richard. Sean is hosting the second Gulf Intelligence Food Security Forum in Abu Dhabi tomorrow, looking at these issues with, among others, Bob Geldof. We'll get your thoughts on that in a second, uh, Sean. But also with us in the studio tonight, real pleasure, uh, two guys who are launching tomorrow a business called AgriCell which is hoping, or is indeed, uh, growing soilless agricultural technologies. First of all, Kunal Wadwani, founder and board member of AgriCell, and also Yalman Khan, the founder and chief executive of AgriCell. Kunal, Yalman, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Good evening, Richard. Yalman, I'm going to talk to you first of all. You're launching AgriCell tomorrow, and by launching, it's your commercial launch. But actually, this company has been around in one form or another for, for three years or so. In simple terms, and, I, and I've seen the technology, you grow fruit and vegetables, not in soil, but in plastic, through some very, very clever technology <laughs> that I'm sure you're going to tell us all about now. Tomorrow is your commercial launch. The company's based here in the UAE with investors from the UAE. The technology and the clever stuff was researched in Japan. You think this could revolutionise agriculture. Tell us more. No, no, absolutely. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, the plastic that you mentioned is actually a membrane uh, that has been used extensively in the last 30 years for uh, industrial purposes and for medical technology. But nobody's ever applied that to the uses of agriculture. And uh, it looks like plastic, but this film farming, as it's known, uh, has been trialled um, in R&D mode for about 10 years and commercially in Japan for about three years. And we trialled it in the desert here in the UAE uh, three years ago. And we've come up the ramp and now we're ready to launch commercially and execute the plan. And the critical thing about this, you, you mentioned about uh, growing uh, fruits, salads and spices. Um, the critical thing here is, which the world is faced with, is the issue around water, um, energy and fertilizer. Our solution uh, uses 90% less water up to 80% less fertilizer and the critical thing which is changing everybody's perceptions about this new way of farming is it gives you a 50% up to a 50% boost in productivity yield and that's the amazing thing. It sounds too good to be true and <laughs> I was told as all good journalists are if it sounds too good to be true it probably is. Could I want one I'm going to talk to you now you're a founder and board member we know you best as one of the founders of Zawia one of the Middle East's leading uh, internet portals, a financial information company. You're still a shareholder of Zawiya. That's where you made your name and that's where you made your money. You've invested <laughs> some of that into AgriCell. How do you go from being a technology entrepreneur to being a farmer? <laughs> farmer. Um, I think the, the key there is this entrepreneur. Um, I, I met Yal um, back in 2010 uh, after, after leaving Zawiya. And when uh, this technology was brought to my attention, uh, it sort of sent uh, several uh, alarms uh, buzzing. Obviously, what you mentioned earlier about the food security uh, issue, water scarcity, this is a technology that solves those problems. It ticks all the boxes that, uh, that I was looking for in my next venture. I'm uh, extremely passionate about, uh, about the future uh, as, as a father of, uh, of three kids. I, uh, it's something that resonates with me um, about leaving something, a legacy uh, for the future. And when Yal and I sat down and uh, we got this technology, it was, it was a, uh, a no-brainer for us to sort of take this further. Sean Evers, as I mentioned, Gulf Intelligence is hosting the second food security forum in Abu Dhabi tomorrow. Uh, Bob Geldof among the speakers, His Excellency Sheikh Nahyan Mubarak Al Nahyan. You've done a lot of work on food security over the past couple of years because of this. What are your thoughts? Is this potentially a, a solution to the world's food problems? Well, I was reading, doing my research homework today, and uh, amongst the many different things you come across when discussing food security, I'm just noted what Yalman said about being a father of three children. Apparently another form of food security is not to have any children. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 and that's uh, the Chinese model and others that are... Uh, 
attempting to do that, the whole issue of population control and whether that's a method. But clearly uh, the, the, the great solution for the whole food shortage issue is uh, both technology and logistics. It's really not about overpopulation to a great extent. Of course, the, the world has a, has a finite capacity to support uh, uh, 7 billion people moving on out to 9 billion in the next 30 years. But it's all about technology as a solution. It's about um, about distribution infrastructure and putting the focus on an equal distribution of, uh, of resources and of food in this instance. Clearly the very big issue, as was noted there by, um, by Kunal, is the issue of water. Currently we have about... 70% of the world's consumable water is used in agriculture every year. 40% of the world's land is used for agriculture. So anything that comes along that doesn't require more land and is uh, efficiency with the issue of water has to be a very, very uh, significant, uh, have the potential at least to be a significant mover. Um, and, and so in that sense, it, it sounds like they're ticking the right boxes from a starting point. If we look at some of the other issues that you're going to be discussing, the headline is the world at 7 billion, sustainable question mark. And it was just two or three months ago, wasn't it, that the United Nations said the 7 billionth person had been born. This was the population of, of, of the planet. What are some of the bigger issues that Bob Geldof and others are going to be looking at tomorrow? Well, we're going to actually tackle what is a relatively uncomfortable subject, uh, and that is the whole issue of population control and the ethics of that. We are seeing, for example, in uh, we have the very famous, well-known one-child policy in China, uh, which is starting to uh, sort of crumble a little bit, uh, but it is probably the most uh, in the current uh, sort of era, the most uh, controversial of, of strategies and policies in terms of population control. But it, for a, a country the size of China with the ability or the, the requirement to feed 1.3, 1.4 billion people every day, it is a significant challenge. And with that, the the issue, if, if there wasn't a, a one-child policy, what size of population would we be looking at in China? Also in India... Now there is a little bit more uh, maverick policies coming in in terms of uh, population control and, uh, for example, uh, women being offered all sorts of incentives, whether they be cash prizes or, uh, in some instances, a, a small car if the, for sterilization methods in order to uh, stop having children. So there's all sorts of sort of... Uh, emerging policies, both official and unofficial, across the world, uh, uh, and particularly in the developing world, on population control, which are quite controversial on the left of politics, on the right of politics, across most religions. But according to Bob Geldof and other big thinkers on this subject, Jeffrey Sachs at Columbia University, population has to be on the table for discussion and how to tackle it. Uh, and really, from Bob's perspective and a lot of the big thinkers, it's not about bringing in draconian methods of population control. It's about education. And anywhere where you have particularly the education and the advancement of women, uh, you find that uh, population uh, per levels drop to the, to because the, 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 it's essentially the empowerment of women. And uh, in the world today, a great amount of the burden of birth control and other such things fall on women. So the education of women is seen by the big thinkers in this space to be the, the ultim, one of the ultimate uh, tools uh, to tackle sustainability of the world population of this size. Yalman, if I can turn to you, you've been growing tomatoes in, in greenhouses in Japan and Sharjah now for a while. I ate one of your tomatoes about half an hour ago, and it was very, very nice. But how... To what extent can you scale this? To what extent can you scale this technology so it's not just, you know, a, a, a dozen or so warehouses in Tokyo and a couple of dozen more in the Middle East? So it's something that doesn't just move the needle in terms of your profit, but moves the needle in terms of, of, of the global food situation. I think it's a very interesting question, Richard. Um, if we take the story and what we've learned from Japan in the last three years, th when this technology first was commercialised, um, the old farmers in Japan were against it. They said, oh, Mother Earth, soil, this is where we'll farm. All the young farmers, and I'm talking people under the age of 45, I'd consider in Japan to be on the younger side, 
uh, they all had, uh, went for this in a big way. So most of these farms, there's about 170 farms now in three years. Uh, big banks are behind it now financing these farms. These uh, kids, and even younger than that, started managing these farms, um, and they were less hesitant uh, against the barriers, what they thought this would bring. So what we think, um, same thing in the Middle East, you don't have to be an agriculturist or a farming person because there's not genuine farming in arid lands. So what you need is to be, have a business mindset, and we're trying to bring a very uh, structured Japanese approach of farm in a box where we will get you up and running, trained, transfer of technology, and build your farm out, and actually get you up to your first harvest in six months and let you then grow that farm. Um, you don't have to be a farmer for that. And we're finding in our early sort of weeks and months of this launch, we're finding a lot of people interested in it. We're talking with Yalman Khan and Kunal Wadwani of Agricel, Dubai-based company that's launching their new Farm in a Box film farming technology tomorrow in Dubai. Also, Sean Evers of the GulfIntelligence.com, organiser of tomorrow's Food Security Forum in Abu Dhabi. More from them when we come back.